I know how the internet works. A few of you are gonna, you're gonna click on the video because you read the title, you're gonna dislike the video, and then you're gonna leave, okay? You're not gonna give this video five seconds worth of your time. If you're still watching though, I plead with you, please give this a chance. Start this video off with an open mind because at the end of the day, my loyalties do not lie with Intel or AMD. I could care less who's on top. For the longest time, AMD has been trashing Intel. They've humbled them significantly and that's a good thing. Okay, nobody is nobody's denying that here. Uh, but my goal is to save you money. My goal is to kind of point you in the right direction in terms of value, in terms of uh, that price to performance metric that we're all striving to perfect here. The problem is that prices are always changing. The markets are always changing. And just like we made a video recently, check it out up here, uh, about the graphics card market, I also want to make a video talking about the CPU market and how different it is now than it was 12 months ago. Stay with me. Activating Windows is as simple as hopping on over to SCD Key's VIP site where you can purchase an OEM Pro key for a little over 10 US dollars. Use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in a matter of seconds, and activate your OS here to remove that annoying watermark. Click the link below to get started and use my offer code GSL for a sweet discount. Now I've been seeing some things float around about how Intel is suddenly value. It is suddenly a good chip to buy it used to not be, right? If you were a value-oriented person, Ryzen owned that crown for a long time. And now with the release of Zen 3, they're pretty much trading blows with, if not exceeding in several categories, uh, the performance levels we've come to expect from Intel. Uh, but you can't buy Zen 3. You cannot buy a Zen 3 chip. I mean, if you're lucky, you pay over MSRP for one if you consider that being lucky. Um, if you're super, super lucky, one of the very fortunate few, then you'll find one at MSRP, just a small inventory dump, and uh, there you go. But most of us are in the same boat. If we wanna buy one of these chips today, it's kind of impossible. And that leaves a lot of us resorting to Zen 2 chips. Now, these are still perfectly viable for gaming. The problem is the prices haven't really come down enough to justify buying them new. That's at least my take on it. So $200 for a Ryzen 5 3600, I mean, that's, that's pretty lukewarm. That's what we've come to expect from this chip for a year or more now. And Newegg's making it seem as though this used to be priced at 240 bucks. Sure, it might have been for a few minutes or hours, who knows, but this has always been a $200 chip, so don't let this fool you here. But there are a few other chips to consider. Now, some are saying that Intel is all around the better buy, right? Um, and that's something that I would have never thought I'd heard in, in, uh, in a decade. Ryzen has been destroying Intel in the value department. But uh, there are a few, I mean, worth considering. Uh, I think that there is maybe one or two exceptions that people are latching onto and kind of extrapolating that across the entire Intel range right now. Intel is definitely pricing their SKUs more competitively in light of the fact that Zen 3 is widely not available, right? And that's that's a smart marketing decision. And a chip like this for, let's just make it an even 250 bucks or so, I mean, that's $50 more than the Ryzen 5 3600, okay? And if we're comparing gaming performance, remember the 10600K, it's the latest architecture from Intel, it's gonna be a gaming crusher. It will destroy games, it will keep up with those really high frame rates you're demanding, especially in competitive titles like CSGO and the like. The Ryzen 5 3600 is still on Zen 2 architecture. It is a great architecture, again, from a value perspective, but it is not the best performer, especially when you're going low as, as low as a 3600, which again, that's not like bottom of the barrel. I'm not trying to say that, but it is definitely on the weaker side with respect to the Core i5 in terms of gaming. So there's a bit of ebb and flow there. Is the Delta and your frame rate worth the $50 savings? I would honestly say, yeah, um, six or seven times out of 10, I would recommend the 3600 over the 10600K. That's just my take on it. Now, there are a few more areas where Intel has suddenly become a bit more competitive. I wanna start us off first with the Ryzen 7 3700X here. So this is being sold by Newegg for 325 bucks. This is not an incredible deal by any means. So this is pretty, again, lukewarm. The fact that they're saying they marked it down by five more dollars, I mean, that's like, what, just over 1% of the total ask for this is not significant at all. But um, this is an eight core 16 thread chip, you know, max max boost of uh, 4.4 gigahertz. It's decent. I mean, for, for 65 watt TDP chip, especially, this is a pretty sweet CPU. And you're getting an extra five bucks off with this promo code. The competition actually comes from generation old Intel architecture as well, oddly enough. And that is in the Intel Core i9-9900KF. Now, for those who don't know, any SKU in Intel's lineup with an F in the name means that it does not include an IGP. And that for 99% of you, 
won't really matter unless you're trying to run integrated graphics for whatever reason, or maybe your graphics card dies and you have to temporarily plug uh, your HDMI or DisplayPort cable into your motherboard. This chip ain't gonna send you any picture, okay? So you kind of SOL that I might wanna have a cheap like GT710 off to the side just for you know a rainy day. But for everything else, this is essentially the same as the regular vanilla Core i9-9900K. Again, it's one generation old, but there are a few pros to this actually. First off, it's rather affordable. I mean, remember these used to be 500 plus US dollars. Some were selling for $600 or more just because there weren't a lot of them available. Now you can buy them for under 400 bucks all day. I'm gonna get this delivered in literally one day to my house. And on top of that, because this is a gen old, you can pair it with a much cheaper Z390 motherboard. These are again a gen old. Some of these retailers are trying to offload extra inventory of the older chipsets. A Z390A Pro LGA 1151 motherboard from MSI. So I'm gonna set you back about 130 bucks. This is a brand new Z series chipset board for $130. That's awfully competitive uh, with some of the B chipset offerings from AMD. And one of the things I've been loving about the Ryzen platform is that you can pretty much reuse any chipset you want. I mean, I could put a 3700X in a B350 motherboard, originally not even sanctioned by AMD, but it's totally possible. And as a result of that, I'm saving heaps on the motherboard, on the platform overall, that was another reason why it was very difficult to justify Intel, especially for those who were ballers on budgets. But now, I mean, with Z390 boards, as cheap as this, brand new from retailers like Newegg, things are a bit more competitive. Now, yes, this is a much cheaper CPU than the 9900KF. Still, you're saving about $50. It's typically gonna be around a $50 delta. Notice between this and this, there's a $50 delta, and between this, and this, there's about a $50 delta. Um, so you're paying a tad bit more for the Intel chip, but again, you're gonna get better gaming performance 9.9 .9 times out of 10 in the Intel chips, unless for some reason you're frequency limited or if your memory is just super slow, and there's something holding you back intrinsically. Um, the Intel chips are gonna be the better buys from a performance standpoint, but value is, I mean, it's kind of a gray area now, which is something I'm not used to from Intel. And there's one more clash between red and blue that I wanna talk about in this video. That is between the Intel Core i9-10850K, we'll talk about the SKU in a second, and the Ryzen 9 3900X. Okay, so this is a $540 chip, right? That is at least what it's selling for on Newegg. This price again, pretty lukewarm when seen in light of the fact that Zen 3 is now available. We all know it's actually not, which is why these prices haven't adjusted. Anyway, this is a 12 core chip, right? 24 threads, 4.6 max boost. You probably won't see this unless you're manually overclocking. Just gonna throw that out there, even if you're pairing it with a pretty beefy X570 chipset. Uh, but the competition from Intel is in this 10850K. Now, for those who don't know about this SKU, and admittedly, I really didn't know much about it either because it was kind of like a soft launch from Intel. We didn't get any news about this chip being launched, I didn't get any review sample for it. It's essentially the same as the flagship 10900K. It just has a 100 megahertz lower max turbo boost frequency. That's that's literally it. They, they still have IGPs, if that matters to you. They still have 10 cores, 20 threads. Again, just that 100 megahertz delta. And that's assuming you don't wanna manually overclock past that. So at that point, these chips more or less become the same. What these are, uh, on, on paper, these are essentially just slightly worse binned 10900Ks. And look, you're saving as a result of that. $430 for this is pretty freaking incredible. If actually you get another $10 off with this promo code from Newegg, that puts it at 420 bucks, <laughs> 420. Now this here, I would be willing to call an anomaly at these current prices. I know that the 3900X has an extra two cores and extra four threads, but when we're talking about games, Games could give a crap. If you have 10 cores versus 12 cores, eight cores is really gonna be the sweet spot you'll find today. Yes, there are always exceptions, but there are very few exceptions in this case. Eight cores, you're gonna struggle to saturate all eight of those, let alone 16 threads in most titles. So the debate between 10 and 12 cores in favor of the 3900X more or less falls apart. And obviously there are workloads where having a 12 core system would be beneficial, not gaming workloads, but the $100 Delta is the real kicker here. 540 bucks for the 3900X on one generation old architecture, mind you. I mean, I think that that more or less makes up for the difference in core count alone uh, right here. And then you're saving $100 on top of that because the 10850K is using the freshest architecture that Intel has to offer as of time of filming. Um, so 
if we're really putting these through the ringer, I mean, the 10900K versus 3900X um, is something that we've tested on the channel before. And the, t the two core delta there is more or less made up for by the fact that this is a more efficient process from Intel. Now there is one downside. Obviously you're gonna have to pair this chip with a Z490 chipset board in order to extract the full potential of the CPU, assuming you want to manually overclock. And it, to me, really wouldn't make sense to pair an unlock SKU with a chipset that won't let you change your multiplier. So maybe tack on an extra 50 bucks over what you would spend on a B550 board uh, from AMD for the 3900X. We're still saving money though by going with the Intel chip here and for arguably the same, if not better performance, depending on the workload. So that's why I think this is a real winner. Now, obviously this is just a, a very particular chip. Not everyone's gonna wanna buy a Core i9, especially just for gaming, um, but this would make one heck of an all rounder if you wanted to do streaming, content creation, and gaming all on the same machine. I would say eight to 10 to maybe at the peak 12 cores uh, is gonna be your sweet spot. And this, I, I, no one's paying No one's paying me to say this. Okay? I haven't talked with Intel or AMD about making this video. I really don't give a crap what either of them think. Um, I've, I've already kind of sunk my ship with Nvidia at this point, but for 430 bucks, I think this is one heck of a deal, at least given current market conditions. Now in the lower end space, there is not much to really look at. And that's more or less AMD's fault or whoever you wanna blame on AMD's side, TSMC's fault, market conditions, uh, blame whoever, doesn't matter to me. The fact is what I see here is that the Intel Core i3 is really the only quad core chip in this price range that is even worth considering. The reason why I say that, and this isn't even sold by Newegg, mind you, this is sold by some company called idea buys so this is a third party vendor on, on newegg site 125 bucks quad core chip yeah some are gonna say it's not good enough for gaming games prefer six cores yes most of them do that's the sweet spot i would say in 2021 but the problem is if you don't have the money to spend on a six core chip and you don't want to look in the used market the used market's going to have quite a bit you should consider um if you're just buying new, then this chip is really one of the only chips you can buy, right? Here's the reason why, okay? The alternative to this from Team Red is the Ryzen 3 3100. I don't know if these chips just like don't exist or, or if they're like, if they do exist, but there's so few of them that they're charging way over MSRP, but this is not worth 174 bucks. Mind you, this is not being sold by Newegg, but if Newegg doesn't have it in stock, I mean, what does that tell you about everything else? And then the alternative to the 3100 from AMD is the 3300X, which is a slightly better bin version of the way that the cores are arranged in the uh, in the die itself are a bit different, which actually aids in performance. But the 3300X isn't even listed as a SKU on Newegg's site. I and mean, that tells you how bad this chip is with respect to inventory. So if you thought the 3100, was, you know, make believe. I mean, the 3300X is a freaking fairy tale. Like, what, what skew? Did, did, that, did that skew even exist? And I know it feels really freaking weird to recommend a Core i3 in 2021, but there are people out there who are looking for a CPU in this price range and who are just adamant about not buying used. Look, if you're, if you're looking for a CPU for 100 or 150 bucks even, strongly consider looking in the used market. Heck, even, even in more expensive, price ranges, there's a ton of value to be had in the used market. Um, maybe not as much in the graphics card market, again, as we talked about in that previous video, but um, CPUs, usually you can find a decent discount for a used one. And let's be honest, how many CPUs just randomly die? I mean, usually it's the motherboard or something else that goes first. A lot of the CPUs that you see on eBay and elsewhere are going to be just fine. And if you get lied to and the chip doesn't work when it arrives, the eBay buyer protection guarantee is gonna be on your side, not the sellers. I'd much rather be the buyer in that exchange than the seller and I've been on both sides of that so I kind of know what I'm talking about anyway um yeah I, <laughs> the, the the core i3 exists for a reason there is a market for it that's all I'm trying to say don't you know you don't have to hate on people who can only afford chips like this I and mean, there is a place in the market for this and it is still a pretty darn good chip for the price so that's about all I've got for this one I know the CPU market right now is kind of whack we didn't look at the used market because I want to make a separate video about that because it is there there are very different price trends on on eBay um, so, you know, if you're looking for a new chip right now, maybe you see Intel as a better buy. I could certainly see that now a lot more so than I could have a year ago. And that's just because of what we've come to expect from Zen 3 and the fact that Zen 3 doesn't exist. So Intel has a lot uh, better shot at being the better buy. And I think that the 10 850K is probably the best of them out there. So I've linked all these CPUs we've talked about down below if you wanna check them out. A lot of them are gonna be Newegg because Amazon for some reason, they're just having a 
what appears to be uh, worse stock or the prices are a bit higher. Um, but you'll see both of them down there. Check those out. Their affiliate link. We get a small kickback if you buy anything from those links. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you're currently rocking in your system and what you plan to upgrade to, or if you've been planning to upgrade for a while, what you've kind of encountered in the CPU market today. What kind of trends have you noticed? Thank you all for watching. Consider giving this one a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.